the messianic death. Your messianic death was also mine. The death of our Lord is the very core and climax of your life on earth, also ours. The narrative in all four Gospels, indeed of every writing of both Testaments, gravitates toward the end. This not only in chronology, but is a passion epos, stretched beyond literature unto the fullness of all things. The history of the world is a body of poetry conveying the tradition and hope of a people. The people is us. Within our substantially sorrowful history is an epic which is all the reason for an eventuality of our life on earth and an eventuality. The writers stood near and within the events, and these are the most incredible and important events which ever have occurred. They are the reason for all things. When we say we also died, it is that our life here necessarily was ended, and a better life ensued. Ensued already, it can be said, for the scriptures clearly state, the now presence of the Holy Spirit in our spirit. He is witness to the truth that we are the children of God. The gospel writers and ourselves may be sure that there is expressed not an abstract, colorless acceptance of the overwhelming facts as mere facts within an as yet undetermined significance. We know certainly that your life is ours. We could not live now or in your foreverness had not the Son of God, in fulfillment of thousands of years of prophecy and promise, died for our sins. We ask, were you aware of yourself, aware of your importance? You were sometime illumined to see the mystery of your death and your messianic in your messiahship. The fact was too tremendous and strange a fact, and the messiahship was too comprehensive and centralizing a fact, a life category, for your human and divine lives to have been kept from entering upon the closest of unions. Your death, brutal and bloody and against justice, was yet determined and known by you and the Father and the Holy Spirit after which the Spirit was to assume your presence on the earth. Your death was an absolute, inevitable necessity. Your open arms upon the cross demonstrate the self-abandoning acceptance of your sacrifice. There was no thought scheme in you that remembered, that rendered your death intolerable or let your mind become reconciled to it in some peripheral fashion, yet set your face like flint. There was only an interpretation to your deity. Messiah was to be the death sacrifice for the sins of the world. Never were there unforeseen, unwelcome turns in the path of your life, no modification of the necessity of death. Every thought of the death being absent in your mind. The expectation of extraordinary pain and difficulty of, of this passion and death unfolds when we consider the words, O oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Neither will ours pass, though it be far less than yours. Then our cups will be brim filled with excellent and everlasting wine, which we with you will drink. Amen.